Should be able to go up to the to the right uh -oh. there. Go down. That was on. All right, I gotta go. All right, guys, we're here <laughs> after lots of troubleshooting, dude. <laughs> This is hilarious. <laughs> so we're here. Let me we tell you something about electronics. To talk about. I'm going to give you guys the best troubleshooting for all electronic devices. Fingers crossed. With cell phone, <laughs> with cell phone, uh, cell phones, anything with signal. This is what you want to do, guys. You don't need to call. You don't need to talk to somebody over in India. <laughs> Just reset it. That's what I've learned about electronics. I unplugged it. Unplug reset it. Reset it wasn't it, working, but we unplugged it. Restart it. Reboot it. But we're here. We're here, guys. We made it we, a little we late. We ran it. We're, we're, we're here until we're not here. I don't know how much battery we got. We've been messing with the system for an hour. Yeah. I, I think it got to the point, James, where we were – this is going to – we're we'll going to stay here overnight yeah. until we figured it out. Uh, we were getting ready to pull the plug, but we hung through. Appreciate you guys staying uh, logged in here. Um, I know Ken was was logged in for a while. What's funny is I met we Travis and I met Ken at iCast. Yeah. He even made the comment. He made the comment on here. He's like, they're they're working on it. They're they're probably calling Travis. <laughs> yeah. No. And guess what, guys? Travis <laughs> don't answer his phone too well. So, uh, but he called back like an hour later, and he was good for uh, I don't know. We'd already figured it out by then. Yeah. He was moral support. Yeah. Moral support. We'll take it. We'll take Anyhow, it. Anyhow, guys. We're going to talk fishing. It's me and James, Captain mm -hmm. Jason, Captain James Beers, coolest last name on earth. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk a little fishing here, spread the news, uh, if, you know, spread our show, share it around, make it happen. Yeah. And uh, let's talk fishing. Yeah. So we're going to talk about this weekend. You guys got a big event coming up. Let's get our let's get our tackle up. Yeah, we had to we up. had to take the we had this stuff all lined up. <sighs> You see all this good stuff? This is all giveaways, ain't it? Yeah, tons of giveaways. So, you know, for anybody that follows the Tampa Fishing Outfitters page or the Tampa Fishing Outfitters Instagram, I mean, you've probably been getting flooded with all this info about what's going to be going on at the store. I want to give out some details um, but uh, because it's huge. I mean, like these events, we do a big Black Friday sale every year. And then we do a, a July event. We call it Christmas in July. I mean, there's going to be some major sales. Um, all pen reels, combos. Every you know, the pen reels are 20% off, which doesn't happen. I mean, wow. not many reel companies. So that's the newest, latest, and greatest. Conflicts, clashes, slammers, internationals, whatever you need from pen, you can get it 20% off. Not to mention, on top of that, they're going to get free braid with it. So I mean, you start spooling up these 300 yard. Uh, braid spools that's an extra 30 bucks at the yeah end. um same deals with daiwa daiwa is going to be 15 percent off everything i know you're a big fan of the daiwa so your bgs your saltist your saltigas every daiwa rod everything 15 percent off and we're spooling up reels um with daiwa j braid as well on j the braid house. what do you think about the j braid love it <clears throat> i thought it was good stuff i used i used spider wire um 
you know, part of the Penn family. But the J braid, especially in that coastal blue stuff, yeah, I, I like it. the blue. Yeah, I, they, really, I was uh, a big fan of it. I was curious because one thing about James is you get to test out everything. Yeah, I do. I mean, that's not fair. Yeah, I only get to test out certain brands. You get to try it all and then pick what you like. But now I've got my allegiance, but I do get my hands on it in the shop. So you know, you can kind of. I think at this point, I can look at a. You can almost feel a braid and know how it's going to perform out on the water it, yeah. by handling and fishing so many different types by now. So, yeah, but I like the J-Braid. J-Braid is very similar. I typically, if you like, original Power Pro. The yep. simplicity of and it. And I do. Then you'll, like a re- then you'll like the regular J-Braid for sure. So we got that going on. Shimano, um, you know, we have free Power Pro Super Slick with every really purchase. Wow. That stuff's expensive. Most expensive yeah. braid on the market. Really? Um. Cleanse oil's twenty percent off. Sunbum's running a promo. Um, Costa Del Mar, they're doing like we have t- every shirt, every T-shirt is ten bucks. Wow! So I mean that's more than half off. And I mean not old stuff, the stuff that's in here right now that's new. Every T-shirt's ten bucks. Every Costa hat's ten bucks. Every Costa Performance shirt is twenty bucks. I mean, so those are pretty big savings compared to, um, you know, compared to what you usually see. All the Lee Fisher stuff. So this is what I know we've been getting phone calls on all week. Yes, cast nets. Humpbacks, bait busters, joy fish, doesn't matter. Every cast net, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 20% off. Wow. Um, so if you're in the market for a cast net, you know, save yourself 40, 50 bucks. Even if you're not in the market for a cast net, you're going to hang one on a marker or whatever and say, damn, I wish I had a backup. Never so, done that. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> you witnessed that. Carry a couple, uh, carry a backup. Um yeah, and Ken's talking about the new Daiwa reel. So, big promo on those. All the LT series, Ken. So, everything from Daiwa that's labeled with LT is crazy light, crazy strong, um, and they're all going to be on deal. 15% off, plus you get free braid. Yeah. Hard to beat. They, um, Ken, what reel are you talking about? Are you talking about the uh, ballistic? There's the ballistic, the Ballistics fuego. Ballistic light. I got this my tournament reel. Yeah. It's almost, it's so light that. Uh, it's hard to find a rod to match it. Yeah, I, I've got it with my St. Croix uh, Avid, and I like it, but it almost is so light. Like, it's awesome for artificials. Great. But it feels like the rod is the same weight as the reel. There's no, like, yeah. end heavy, really, yeah. with it. But, um, yeah, I, I, I do like the ballistic. But, man, you guys got a lot of stuff going on yeah. here, and this is this weekend, correct? Yeah, skinny water culture, um, you know, so if you've got a fly background or you know these guys, their roots are in Tampa, Clearwater area. They've been a huge supporter of ours. They've donated a bunch of stuff for us to just do giveaways, door prizes with. There's going to be a bunch of savings on their apparel, which I'm a big fan of. Yeah. You know, they're the originals to do the state flag has net with their uh, patch with the guy throwing the cast net in it. Yeah. I love it. So met with them at iCast. You know, they want to get involved here at the store. So they're going to be coming out to support. Those guys will be here. They're doing giveaways on hats, um, you know, license plate stickers, buffs, you name it. Shimano's coming through with a big giveaway. They're doing a Calcutta G. Loomis rod. I mean, it's a five hundred dollar setup. They still make Calcuttas. Oh I know, yeah, I don't know a whole lot about the. We Shimano. sell a bunch of them, dude. I had the four hundred back in the day. That was like the Mac Daddy. Rail. Feel that combo. That's the. So we're doing a Calcutta G. Loomis giveaway and a CI four with a Shimano Zodius. So Stratic CI four and Shimano Zodius. You're giving this away. Five hundred dollar combo. I might cancel my charter. Giving it away. I mean, I might be better off canceling my charter if I win some raffles. If Can you I win? win? Yeah. If you win one of these, yeah. Every time every time you come in to make a purchase, you're going to get a certain number of raffle tickets depending on how you spend, mm-hmm. and they'll let you throw it in whatever bucket. Are you guys picking this up? Don't be just watching. Take notes. Yep. Um, pen Squall combo, you know, $200 combo, grouper combo, yeah. you know, a digger. That's going to be given away. And then the last combo is a pen conflict. These are the reels I use. Yeah, let me check that's that out. That's my charter reel right there. I have a different rod, but that's the one I've been running now. You know what's funny about almost everybody with charter reels? Yeah. They all use aluminum base reels. Yeah. You know why? It's like an old F-250, yeah. son. They keep can't going. beat it. You can't, can't kill it. The, you know, the the, the uh, my brain fart. The lighter reels are great, but for chartering, yeah. it, it's like, you know, it, it's like a Corvette. Corvette's <coughs> yeah. fast, sleek, yep. smooth. I know. But you don't run it through a construction site. Cause it's it like designed. the BG from Daiwa versus the ballistic. Yeah. You know, you don't want to be probably charging You don't want to beaten down. Yeah. You need something that's going to be abused, and, yeah. that, and that's the difference. But this is a nice reel. Yeah. 
I've been um, running those a year, man. No problems. Yeah, that's awesome. But man. we're giving away one of those combo. That's Sweet. over a $200 combo. Giving away a humpback cast net, 10 foot 3 8. It's a Tampa Bay special. Yep. The net that, you know. I thought it's the 14 foot now. No, this is <laughs> the Tampa Bay, Bay special. special. This the net, bigger the better. Yeah, there's more of these than any other uh, net. Are out we going to make a, Is there eventually going to be a net that covers maybe the entire shipping channel by the time it's said and done? Yeah, we're working on it. I mean, you're going to have to, like, three people to throw it in sections. Three boats. It's going to be you, Travis, and Rick. Yeah. Oh, that there's might, a stain net. That's already invented. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Travis is going to throw it. Me and Rick are going to yeah. are going to laugh in the background like we do in the video, right? I love that part. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah. We're laughing at him. I wish you can catch bait like that every day. Just let him get on the bow. It's crazy. Do it. My back would love that right now. So, yeah, man, tons of giveaways, Shimano tackle bags, and all this stuff. There's, like, multiple of them. Accurate pliers, you know, custom aluminum machine made in the USA pliers. Giving away a set of those. Awesome. Yeah, but you got to come hang out. Good stuff. Roland Martin is going to be here all day, Saturday what? and Sunday. What? I swear. Get out of here. That's cool. Yeah. Legend. That's Hashtag a cool legend. guy, man. I talk with him at iCast. Yeah. He's got some stories. He's got a lot. He's been fishing you a long old time. Old-time guys like that, man, a lot of them are just down-to-earth, cool guys that made it in the business. They're not, you know, they're not like mm-hmm. some of the others where they're kind of like, you know. They're humble dudes. They're, they're, they're just like, whatever, man. From a different time, I made too. some good money and cool, and, hey, let me tell you about this story that happened. Yeah. You know, they're real guys, which is cool. I, I like that. Um, I'll tell you another cool one that I've had fishing multiple times, Frank Sargent. Yeah. Cool, like. Especially here in Tampa. He's yeah, well known. Yeah, I've had him out multiple times. Actually, he emailed me. He was going to ICAST. And he's like, hey, man, I wanted to get out for a couple hours. Are you free? And I'm like, I was on vacation. So I couldn't take him. Otherwise, I would have. That guy's awesome. And he's just, and growing up, you read his articles. And stuff, yeah, exactly. He's, you got him on the boat, man. He's just. Normal guy. Normal guy. Laid back. Loves fishing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just cool, cool dude. So, you know the deal. But, um. Did we cover any ICAST stuff last week? I wasn't here. We talk, so we we went live Wednesday night. Travis and I were going Thursday. Okay. So we said we're going, yeah. uh, but we haven't done – we haven't been able to report back. Well, let's do a, a recap. I didn't go, mm-hmm. so this would be – I'll be like a listener right yeah. now. What, give us a little rundown of what, what you saw at ICAST new. I saw that Yeti won something. I'm starting to think it's rigged. Yeah, I didn't really pay too much <laughs> attention. I mean, I hope it was better than that. the bucket. Yeah. Um, there was some cool stuff, man. I think that all three of the big guys, Daiwa, Shimano, Penn, each one hit their own home run in their own right. And what was cool is I thought Shimano delivered best on rods. They have a new, it's called a GLF series, it's like a west coast of Florida live bait series rod. Yeah. That as soon as you pick it up, you're like, there's, you, you just can't not like it. You yeah. pick it up and you're like, this is it, you know? Um, they also have a new Terramar. So the Terramar tarpon rod that everybody loves, you've got a new one. Wow. It is going to – I'm telling you, when they re- it's already released, I think. I think you can order them now. I know we can at the shop. I don't know how soon they're going to ship. It's an 8-foot, 6-inch rod. But if you're a – it doesn't matter how you fish in Tampa. If you fish crabs, chunk, this rod will handle Covers it all. It all. Well, like we talk about with the St. Croix Tidemaster. Yeah. Like it has all those features. It's just six inches longer, but when you pick it up, it feels good, um, and the price point is yeah. legit. It's like 150 bucks. Yeah, you know the the uh, the Tide Master for me, uh, the, just the action on it is perfect to where you, yeah. you can use it for everything. Yep. Uh, other rods, the old Terramar was great, but you either had the one that was kind of limber, the really good the, crab rod that was undergunned on big tarpon. Yeah. Or the opposite. Or you had the broomstick. That, that couldn't toss a crab. You might, you're not sure if you're supposed to target fish or, or, or grouper fish yeah. with it. But it was a good rod, too. I had some of them. So uh, that's good to hear that they updated it. I think, you know, companies, real companies, rod companies, they're really adjusting to the market. They're listening to the pro guys yeah. more. And, yeah. and I, I don't know if that happened five, yeah. six years ago. I think they just put stuff out there. I think you have to. It, it's no different than our business as, as a charter captain. I mean – you can't just roll out and be a charter captain. There's yeah. a lot of competition. There's sure. You, so you have to, you have to bring something. Hone good, your special. craft. Yeah, you got to bring something special to the table. And I think companies are doing that too. Um, I know Saint Croix is really honed in on trying to. They brought a whole new line of rods, which I, I need to look at it more. Um, I think they've changed some stuff around. They mm-hmm. sent some emails to the pro guys on it and stuff. But uh, there's a lot of new stuff coming out. Um, new stuff for me sometimes scares me, mm-hmm. especially if I have something like. You when they see get, it out for a little bit. When they get rid of that BG, I'm going to yeah. be real, real scared to try something else because uh, 
and, and Daiwa's gotten good with testing stuff because they put the hands – they've got it in my hands before it was ever released. They got it in John Griffin's hands, a mm-hmm. few other guys. So, um, and, and what I've learned by dealing with Daiwa in particular, which I know Shimano and all the other companies do the same, is our market is pretty rough on reels, and I didn't realize that. Mm-hmm. We use smaller reels and catch bigger fish. Bigger fish, fish yeah. And we do it – I mean – you know, You're talking about the southeast, before, yeah, West like Central, Le- really. Lu- Louisiana down to yeah, Florida? Louisiana okay, too. Yeah. I guess you're saying Louisiana yeah. too. Um, but that's what I've been kind of told is West Central's pretty hard. Pretty hard. hard. I mean, we go out mm-hmm. and, and and catch twenty to thirty snook that are running drag mm-hmm. on every fish yeah. that are twenty to twenty five inch every day. You just don't get that everywhere else. What were you doing, like Louisiana on redfish? You're, no, you're right. But here's the, so, and then I think we take it one step further. So, especially this time of year, have you looked at how nasty your reels are at the end of the day? Like, especially if you have clients on your boat where you're you the the captain have your hands on the reels a lot, you're chunk baiting. Oh yeah. You know, covered in scales, blood, salt water. It's like your shirt at the yep. end of the day. You know, you look at that. That stuff works its way into reels. When you say we're hard on it by using small, you're absolutely right. Times that by blood, gut, scale, salt water that are reels. Whereas I know Louisiana, they're not a real big live bait fishery in terms of their red fishing yeah. inshore. West or the east coast of Florida has a lot more um, artificial users in there. The the west coast, your your general west coast fisherman. Is that the is usually a fifty fifty guy, even a yeah. weekend warrior. I'm fifty fifty live bait, fifty fifty artificials, live bait. Every time I'm hooking a bait, I'm holding the reel, right. bringing the thing down there, splashing salt water every yeah. time. You know, so I know what you're saying. I, lot, I see where of, you're coming from. And there's a lot of technology that's come come a long way on reels. I think uh, it, it's good to see companies listening because there was some stuff. That, yeah. Uh, every company's got a bad, just a bad engineered, uh, just not well thought out product. Everyone's done it. And it hits the market, and it's just like a tank. Yeah. And I think all of them have gotten good at uh, listening and 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 kind of and, and uh, making it better. So, anyhow, uh, fishing. Let's talk a little fishing. We've talked products. Yeah, we're we're going to roll for probably forty minutes or so. We had to screw with this software. Uh, God, I don't even know how we're running. Honestly, that that's on fumes. But we're here. And yeah. We're live and. You know, we so, want to talk fishing. Yeah, so we're dealing with a crappy weather pattern. I, I think there's some kind of low-pressure system just th- dumping water. I don't know what's dumping. We've got west winds blowing 15 to 20 know. every day. It's raining. Um, really sucks because we, we flew some tarpon on Sunday. Uh-huh. And uh, I was like, all right, cool. I had the right clients. Tomorrow I've got a tarpon trip. And the mornings have been decent, and the weather just progressively has gotten worse. So we've been uh, – We've been doing a lot of inshore this week. I, I've been on some good tarpon, too, so it's like... Uh, yeah, I saw that. Out. Basically got off the plane from your vacation and f- tarpon in I the did. air a few I, hours yeah, later. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> you know, I, and I will tell you guys, um, I was off last week, took a vacation with the with the family and did some scalloping and, and uh, stayed at Plantation. I uh, thought it was a real, real cool uh, place, and... Um, it was a great time. And anybody, I will tell you this, and I, I, you know, we always try to push people to Tampa because we fish and, and we thrive our businesses yeah. on on chartering. But uh, if you haven't taken your family to do scalloping, uh, it's a must. Put it on your list. Make it happen. It's a little expensive, uh, depending on what you spend and if you bring your boat. Um, but it's worth it. I, I probably had one of the best vacations I've ever had with my yeah. kids. It was fun. How we, old are your kids now? Five and ten. Two okay. daughters. Um, and we had we had let's see, we had fourteen people that went. So they're like group of boats. Yeah, oh, we had cool. like three or four boats. Mm-hmm. Seen my my good buddies Kevin and and Mike from Canyon Bay just happened to be out there, tied off. Sweet. And we drank some adult beverages with them, but the, you know it was just an awesome experience. Um, we ran out every day, and my buddy got some numbers from his buddy that was there. And we limit it out on three boats every day. Cool, yeah. Text me that. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> it was it was an awesome experience. The kids had fun. They were able to get it. We got them in deep water, six to six to eight feet. Right. Um, but it, it was an awesome experience. If, if you have a chance to go do scalloping with your kids, it is the ultimate family experience. I've heard that. I so I've got an eleven, and my son turned four last Wednesday when we were doing the show. 
you know, I just I was just wondering how that went for your five. It went good. So <laughs> the five year old's tough because she wants to do everything that they that they want to do, but she's not a great swimmer. Right. And the only downside is we went on strong tides last week, mm -hmm. so you were fighting the tide Understand. out there. Yeah. But so we, I had to watch the five year old more. We kind of took shifts, me and my wife. Um, but it was fun. That my 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 ten year old was driving down, getting them. You know, Loving it. my buddy's friend who, you know, we grew up together. Now our kids are growing up. They were both out there scalping. It, it was absolutely awesome. Cool. Um, we got back. I did not chuck scalps. My buddy did one time. I was like, "You're in my vodka time." <laughs> Paid the guy yeah. thirty bucks. Of, here's the here's the yeah, bucket, here's sixty dude. bucks, dude. Clean it. Um, we got a ton of scalps. It was a great time. Uh, the the worst thing I will tell you if you stay at Plantation, um, that they do need some quality control in Crystal River. Um, they didn't have ice at a place that's I'm talking sold out. Like every day so i had to go to the other marina which ran out of fuel and i'm like it's not even opening week dude like i'm like are you serious mm -hmm. like so but it was great it was um so and the other thing that sucks about plantation they have concrete sea walls that you put your boat next to oh yeah you gotta get like pvc poles like i buddy boat i was like i ain't put my boat in that wall yeah, i'm gonna park next to you yeah <laughs> yeah my, my so my that. buddy had the pontoon and i tied <laughs> that's off when the, you idle real slow like. yeah <laughs> no i straight told i was yeah. like i ain't put my boat's ring yeah. i ain't going against the wall the pontoon can hit it so you definitely need to have some pvc poles to stake out next to the to the uh, sea wall but it, it honestly it's a great deal also if you do go down there i'm gonna give you the best advice on on uh navigating uh i don't there's people that are smoke lower units all the time. Yeah. So we stay, we came out of Crystal River and we basically went to the last channel marker and then went then we just went out. Yeah. We ran parallel with the shore. Didn't go any reverse angle Dude, back towards the shore. If you think you want to cut one of the markers, forget it. I, I seen it on extreme low tide. It ain't no joke. And I was running in my tower and the water. You think our water's clear here in yeah. in the spring? Another ball game. Pinfish. Like our white bait. Like, I would just see pinfish flashing out of my tower. I'm running 40. But you, I did see, like, a boulder. Like, you just like, wow. Like, because you could see Scared. plain as day mm -hmm. while you're running. But we were in, you know, 8 to 10 to 14 foot of water. So, if you go to that last channel marker, and if you're going to go, we went left. So, I think that's that was south. So, we're going to, if you go yeah. south, you're good. I didn't go north. So, don't, I'm not giving you no advice. I'm just telling you the last channel marker. And if you go south, you're good. You're good. Um, it was amazing how many, how much money. It's, I, there was hundreds of boats out there. Um, other advice I can give you if you're looking for scalps. I'm not a professional scalper, but we did live it out every day. We did have a good hunch on numbers. Don't go to the pack because we went to the pack one time, and then you go to the pack. We got three scalps. It's picked over. It's like fishing here. You don't go to where there's 50 boats yeah. on a spot that may have been good three days ago because. They're sore lipped. Yeah. So just try to you know find the uh, find the good grass. Like I said, we're in eight foot of water, and look for the sandy patches out there, and and that's where you get out and scalp. It was pretty good. Besides that, I don't know a whole lot about. It. I'm not. I'm not telling you to tell you I'm a professional by any means. I've been twice, but <laughs> I will tell you that it was a great time. Um, the scalps were a bonus. That's so. cool, and I know they've got the whole Pasco deal coming up too. With yeah, I haven't been following too closely. I've been busy, but I know that they're doing. They're opening up here. So yeah. Anybody wants to share any information in the comments, you know, please do. But I know that it's been a big topic in this area because oh, yeah. it's coming closer to home than ever. Yeah. So it, it, it was cool. Um, fishing, like I said, we're still dealing w with this crappy weather. It seems like I've been saying it all month or all year. Yeah. But uh, bait's been kind of a pain on the south shore, I guess, up by Gandy. It's been. So, good. yeah, I mean, the. the um, the fishing I've been doing, uh, yeah, you know, I'm the like I said, I'm the nomad guy. You guys have your home base. I bounce around wherever. I, I used to do when I first started trying. Uh, which I like because you're talking about your bait problems there. Upper Bay, been doing pretty good. Yeah. I mean, grass spots have been treating me pretty good. Although with the moon, it can get tricky at times, but for the most part, it's good. And then on the flip side, I've been fishing out front in beaches and yeah. Fort DeSoto and stuff like that. I've been able to get bait around there too. You know, you've got the Skyway fortunately or enough piers that you can go and hit them and I've piece been it together. on the flats. Um the flats is is what's been kind of weird about the flats is the fry bait hasn't been real good on the south shore. So we're out in the I've been getting big bait and I like to get a mix. I got the big bait and then I'll I'll fill my well with the with the fry bait mm -hmm. as long as it's okay fry bait. And it's been tough. I yeah. mean, and I, granted, I've been running some doubles, so I've been trying to load up on bait. I've been using less bait and catching fish. 
Yeah. But the snook fishing has been great. Uh, and I, I, I hope Travis is not watching this because he's just going to sit there and just – I'm never going to end up about – I've actually been catching a lot of fish on pinfish, and I'm not a pinfish guy. Yeah. But if I know that if he hears He'd be this, the I told you so, for yeah, sure. Oh, d- d- yep. He's the guy you give him something, he just he's sprinting with it. Like yeah. Not running, sprinting. But I I have been catching quite a bit of stuff on pinfish, uh, snook, redfish. Um, we caught a few reds this week. Again, the redfish bite is yeah, – It is what it is, you know. I don't know what's going on with redfish, but it ain't it ain't right. <laughs> uh, I'll t- I'll take it because I feel like with redfish right now, now what I'm about to say doesn't mean it doesn't apply to every situation like this in the bay. But for me, redfishing right now, take your bait, go on a high tide, find some good looking overhanging Three. mangroves, yep. and toss up under there. And I feel like right now for your average fisherman to go out and target a redfish probably stands a better chance doing that right now than what I was seeing through most of the winter and spring and fall when we didn't have those tides. Yeah, find, find a, my, what I've been doing is I've got some spots with good uh, good tidal flow mm-hmm. on the mangrove line. So whether it's in or out, you have to figure that out on each spot. And like you said, just keep flipping underneath them bushes. Mm-hmm. And and I think you'll find to be successful, them them fish are going to use that as a highway, and they're yeah. going to pick it off. You just have to be able to cast underneath the bushes or yeah. close to the bush. Um, you know, and, and a little advantage you can do if you if you tail hook your bait, it's going to swim away from you. Mm-hmm. Downside to tail hooking is they die easier they flip and they off flip yourself. off easier. So you have to finesse it. So, yeah. um, you know, big schools of redfish. I don't know, man. I've seen like two schools all they're year. Bumping pods here and there, but not like. Not like I've seen, but you know, not to har- not to harp on on the redfish thing or even get too in depth on it. But you're right. I mean, those schools non-existent. Yeah, but you can go out and target I mean, them. I mean, you can. And I tell clients, you know, if that's what they want to target, I kind of uh, I'm really transparent about what that's like. I'm saying this is what we've got to do. We've got to make hundreds of casts today. Yeah. You know, and we're gonna hang. And I don't have any problem hanging tree or hanging hooks and trees and breaking off. We just retie, but tell them that's the type of fishing we're gonna be doing. Yeah, Hot just and banging bushes. Yeah, you got to bang the bushes, mm-hmm. and and you can't be the lazy fisherman because. Yep. Uh, and Ernie is uh, Ernie probably catches more redfish than I do. That dude yeah. is like Mr. Shrimp. I know shrimp's been the ticket lately. Yeah. Shrimp has been a big I, one. I have actually caught, I caught the few I've caught on pinfish. I haven't used shrimp, but uh, you know it, it it makes sense too because when you throw them shrimp up underneath them mangroves, that's that's where you would find a lot of shrimp is up in the mangroves, and mm-hmm. that's where they're running. So it's a good ticket. But, yeah. uh, uh, Dave, I'm glad to hear. I actually was looking at doing some we were talking fishing about up in the kitchen. Yeah. I, I haven't been at the kitchen this year. I keep saying I'm going to go, and I just – the kitchen, I like it up there. but It's, it's a roll of the dice. It's a roll of dice. It's a gamble. Yeah, it and is. And it usually pays big or sends you home yeah. frustrated. Yeah. But it is, it is good fishing. It's a ton of fuel to make a trip happen. So. Yep. I've been mixing in some tarpon and, and with my inshore trips um, here and there. The bait has really been a kind of a pain. You know, today I, I needed some thread fins for cut bait. I needed white bait. Well, there's really not a whole lot of white bait on the markers, if yeah. any. And I'm thin the thread fins because I was out there in between the tides, mm-hmm. non-existent. I finally just hung up it on thread fins. Um, so it, it, the bait, you know, where a month ago we were able to get a bunch of both at one area. I know. And now it's like I can't yeah. get either a lot of them at any of them. You know, I bumped into the last time I did catch, I caught bait. I ran into Ryan Rickard out at the uh, <laughs> at the bridge. We were both at the bridge, and I got there. I saw him at the gas station, you know, and I leave the gas station ten minutes after he does, and then I pull up to the bridge ten minutes after he does. And boy, we're working hard, making a lot of throws. And I was like, I wish I could rewind to a month ago, be when yeah. it's just bam, you know, done. Yeah, What's up, like- John? I was like, uh, be like, uh, what's up, James? Yeah, yeah bait. Yeah, I'm done. We're, done. Right, we're up here and done. Yeah. All right, cool. And then we're six fifty two in the morning. You're like, all right, what do I do for the next hour? You know, the yeah. frustrating thing for me, James, is yeah. I'm not one of these guys. Like, and and it's nothing wrong with it, but some guys are like, and Travis is kind of like this this year. He's like, I ain't going to flats. I don't want my boat dirty. It takes me another fifteen minutes to get all the grass out of the cracks. Yeah. I'm okay with it. I rolled the punches. Like, what I like about the summer. I hear a lot of the old timers, and and I might be there. I'm getting older every day. And they're <laughs> like, man, I don't want to fish the summer. It's hot, and I'm like, dude, I'll fish the summer all day. Yeah. I can go catch twenty, twenty five snook, 
pretty easy. Yeah. Bait's easy. Weather's consistent. Well, uh-huh. guess what's happened this summer? Yeah. None of it is easy. easy. I mean, I can catch plenty of fish, but yeah. I, I'm having – bait's been a pain. I'm like, bait's on the flats. I go through my net five times. I black the well out. Yeah. I pick through the bigger ones. Of course, you have some weeks where you got your spawn bait that moves around. It's a yeah. little tough. But Moons. Do and, that. and when I get a small bait, I'll go snapper fish. Yep. I went to my snapper spot that I hadn't hit all year out in the middle of the bay. It's about 25 foot of water, and we don't get big ones. But, dude, my machine was lit up 15 feet solid. Yeah. Dropped them down. Uh, Monday was kind of rough. I got out there. We limited out. And yeah. I'm marking them. Can't go out there no more. So, you know, the weather's just been a toll, but this this summer's been tough, man. A yeah. lot of throws. This is my back recovery time, and it's not recovering. No. I'm throwing a it's lot. It's working even harder. And then you so. get the throw, like, if you do want to do the bridge or you want to get out in deeper water because you, you're like Travis. And I'm like that to an extent, but I like consistent bait. Yeah. And when I'm bumping around in a whole bunch of different areas, I'll make runs to Skyway. I'll make runs to Markers. I know our flats I know. but So that consistency is there for me, but – What's even worse is when you don't need threadies. I need white bait, and you keep throwing, and you're bringing up 100 pounds of threadies every yeah. time. That'll break your back. Yeah, so. and now I want 100 pounds of threads, and yeah. I can't get two pounds. And that, yeah. So, but it is what it is, man. It's, it's uh, you know, the last five years, our weather patterns have been not typical. Mm-hmm. So, fishing hadn't been bad. It just hadn't been typical. You just have to work. You know, you got to bounce around. And, yep. And – don't be stubborn. You know, that's what I've learned oh, this yeah, year is don't be sure. stubborn. Don't, like, get too caught up in, well, I was getting them here last year yep. on this number or in this flat. You're absolutely right. That's the one thing I've learned about yeah. chartering. I still do it this day. I'll be stu- stuck on doing something, and it's just not working this yeah. year. So just get away from it. Yeah. Like, I I did that beach tarpon fishing this year. I ran out there quite a few times. I'm like, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And every time I keep going, Same it, thing sucks. Happening. it sucks. It sucks. Yeah. It sucks. And then I end up catch. I've caught more fish in the bay this year yeah. than I have, you know. I will say right now, you it, the the I'm really liking what I'm seeing with tarpon inside the bay. Yeah. Like it's encouraging to see. It's just different. You got to work. You got to work it. You're not going to see a lot of fish. Um, and and but you know what? I, I'm fine with it. You I, too. You're right. You're definitely right about that. But look at it from the perspective of, I got a day to go fishing. Right. If you wanted a tarpon fish early season and beach fish. You kind of run out of. That's it. That's your target. You got to yeah. go out there and do that, and your plan B is kind of wishy washy. Yeah. Right now, you want to go tarpon fish. All right, let's do it for two hours. We don't do that. We go catch. Yeah. Go catch reds. Go catch trout. Go catch snapper. You know, it's like. Yeah, there's there's options, mm-hmm. it, and I, I, we, me and Travis are talking about that gives us options. Um, but yeah, it's just like I said, it just the fishing's good. Bait's a little bit of a challenge. It depends on where you are. I went over to Fort DeSoto. I had a trip out of there right before I left. Two days. I had to pick up their customers want me to pick up their site, and they've been going with me for years. So I picked them up. So I was like, well, I'm going to get bait over on that side, inside of the Meisner over there around Pinellas Point. Mm-hmm. Went there. It's blowing out of the East 15. I'm on Pinellas Point. You can't see. Throwing nothing, nothing. I'm like, screw it. So I picked them up. So let's go out here. So we rolled out. Get out there in the flats. Beautiful bait. I'm talking like smoked it. I'm like. Bait over there is just, in general, easier. The flats bait's nicer. It grows faster. It's cleaner. It's healthier. It, it, yeah, the grass is healthy. You just get the little turtle grass, mm-hmm. not all the crap. Yeah. Um. So it, it's, but it is what it is. I fished the South Shore. That's my home base. Yeah. I fished it forever. So it is what it is. And our bait will be fine. It's just been a little different. You know, we usually get it in some different areas there. But um, it is what it is. It's, like I said, the key is get out and go fishing. Right. What else do we got going on? Um, you know, I shoot for me. I run my last two trips for this month, tomorrow and well, three tomorrow and Saturday. So you're going on the voodoo boat. Which well, is... first I'm going to Puerto Rico, so I'm going with the family to Puerto Rico, and I'm doing a little fishing there. I'm gonna be there from Sunday to Friday, and I'm actually gonna be long rod fly fishing. Yeah, tarpon. Um, picked up a guide down there, you know, so. Picked up a guy there Monday. He's going to take me out, pull me around, try to put me on a tarpon on fly. And then from after that, I'm going to go do it on my own. I'm going to go. I'm staying at a beach where I know I can get some snook on that beach. And they've got a golf course on the resort. Okay. And from what I understand, there are monster snook in those ponds inside there. 
So I was uh, thinking you say you play golf, but no, you're no. Play. I retire from golf. I don't <laughs> play golf anymore. Until Rick <laughs> so wants to do I. that challenge, yeah, we got to knock I him just, and Travis I'm out. Just in golf. let you know how horrible I yeah. am. But I'm probably equally with Travis. He's yeah, he's terrible. Yeah, I, I, I Rick am is good. I'm okay. I'm playing a long time, but we'll, R- we'll Rick's figure it pretty, out. Rick's pretty, pretty. Rick's like a pro to me. I've played with him. I was like, okay, how do I do that? I was gonna play off your ball the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> so I told him. But yeah, no. you, and then you're gonna go to Louisiana, right? Yep, little, come back. And actually, what's funny is I'll be up there. So every time I tell someone I'm going to Louisiana, so I come back from Puerto Rico, run a couple trips, and then dodge out to Louisiana. Everyone's going there for the IFA. So everyone's yep. going to be fishing the IFA, redfish. Are you going to be there during that time? I'm going to be coming at the end of it. So I'm going to go in probably Saturday, which is the day of the tournament. Yeah. And I know a lot of those guys hang out till Sunday, Monday. Yeah. But then I'm on the voodoo. Yeah, so the voodoo we'll out of Venice. We'll have some beers. I'll be there Saturday night. We're leaving Sunday Definitely. Morning. Yeah, so. Travis was saying that, too. Like, well, he might still be hanging out. So you're going to be in Venice Marina. Venice Marina. Have you stayed there? No, I've heard about it. It's a dump. It's a dump. Expensive dump. I'm on voodoo's barge they've got a six bedroom barge yeah okay so. well i don't know then i we mm-hmm. stayed at the venice marina mm-hmm. uh yeah i think they're still on it's AOL. not the marina itself the barge is in the marina and it's okay, okay maybe that's what it is i don't know we were on the mainland it was basically like mm-hmm. a shed on top of stilt it's cool like it's a fishing place no yeah. big deal but it was i want to experience bad. it i've heard about it i've been through louisiana i've never really given it its due and and done everything like you guys have, like the redfish scene. Like that's the funny thing is I've always my dreams to go there and redfish, and then we're uh go and then we're going, but we're just going for yellowfin tuna. I'm going on the voodoo. They run a yellowfin 39. Two of them run out every day. Oil rigs like yeah. eight, 60 to 80 miles out. Yeah, they were coming in every day. We I prefished four days there last year, um, and we were staying there. I mean, I'm telling you. I was like, holy smokes. I'm hoping that's me. Yeah. So Y'all are going to be walking with Is that the hook boats? No, that's the next. So from what I know, and somebody step in and correct me if I'm wrong, they've got the Voodoo, which is pelagic, running yellow fins, and the hook boats, I, I don't want to get this wrong, but it's like the Southern Gulf or Mexican Gulf that run the 42 Freemans with the hook on them. Yeah, so All the right. hook guys, were. There. I don't remember yeah. the Voodoo. I'm not yeah. sure if he was there. Uh, you know, it's funny. We're in, uh, when we were at Plantation, they got a hook boat there, too. Yeah. 32 Freeman with uh I think it was here for ICAST. I think they were going to do that before they head back because that boat was out in front of ICAST. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He Dude was real cool, blonde-haired dude. He, he actually fished IFA out of – we were talking. He's like – and I I don't know how we got on conversation, but he's like, yeah, man, I fished IFA out of Tampa, or, or, uh, Tampa, and he's like, Man, you guys got some crazy manatee zones. Yeah, I know. He was like, <laughs> he was saying how he he stayed outside the manatee zones, and mm-hmm. he's like, everybody was blowing the zone because it was rough. And he's like, it was crazy rough. That's the other thing I liked about Crystal River, and I don't know if it's just luck. They really didn't have a sea breeze. Like I rode my tower everywhere. It's like it was like flat calm everywhere. Yeah, maybe that's because it's not I, from it's not as steep, shallow. Now, not that Tampa is, but Tampa's steeper. No, that's we were. I, I was on the three mile line, three nautical mile. That's what line, I mean. And it was. And how deep were you? Ten feet. Yeah, so three miles from here, we're, feet, we're like in. That. You know, I'm 30 feet, I'm going to call it, and three miles off of I the mean, beach. I was running 40, yeah. 45 every day getting it. Like, yeah. Or I let my buddy drum up. But it I was takes a lot more a, breeze in that depth to get it going. I yeah. think that's why, because I've heard that same thing, too. It was neat. I was like, this is a lot great. A people run flat bottoms. I was like, no wonder they run flat bottoms. Yeah. Like, you know, so it was just a, it was an experience. I, I, enjoy, uh, I enjoy fishing as long as it's not doing snook in Tampa Bay or Red <laughs> Yeah, right. Like, I enjoy going to Louisiana. Fishing elsewhere? I, I, I've actually found a new liking for fishing. And the last few years, I've experimented with stuff. I've went to Louisiana. I've started doing some offshore stuff with some buddies on a fr- on fun trips. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, kind of gotten that liking for fishing. It's mm-hmm. not dealing with the same old yeah. stuff. So it's, it's good because it's kept my drive a little bit more. Yep. Um, so it's cool. But uh, – it's cool, man. You'll you'll like the Louisiana thing. Um, Travis was telling me about it. Actually, last couple of years we yeah. fished the championship, and and uh, you know what what's weird when you fish the IFA. And I've said it before. It's like it messes with your head. You got 15 pounds. You ain't got jack. You ain't like, got nothing. But if you if your first year you're like, man, we got good weight. And you're like, yeah, no, no. no. I mean, we had almost 17, and we're in fifth on day one. Yeah, like that's 16 something. That's not crazy. The year before last, and. Yeah. and so it messes with your head when you got fish. In a Tampa Redfish tournament, you have 12 or 13. You're like, we got a chance. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean. It could be a tough day for everyone. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's, um, but it's cool. You'll enjoy it. It'll be a fun trip. 
And uh, so this weekend we're doing the big – Yep, recapping it Friday through Sunday. So it's starting tomorrow, really. I mean, and we even gave the deals out to some folks today. There's so much going on. I mean, I I strongly suggest to get the gist of it. Don't take it from our mouths. Go to the Facebook page or the Instagram page for Tampa Fishing Outfitters. But the giveaways alone are sick. You know, humpback cast nets, Shimano combos, and, you know, $1,000 worth of combos, $500 worth of pen combos, skinny water culture, uh, like, kind of gift packs, tons of them. Um, but the deals, man, the deals, 20% off pen reels, 15% off Daiwa. Shimano's getting free braid with everything. Um, the clothing, you know, if you need to stock up on fishing shirts and hats, 10 bucks. I mean, just about every shirt in here is like 10 bucks right yeah, now. That's killer. And it's not, like I said, it ain't old three-year-old stuff. It's, we're trying to make some current room, stuff, you know, we're yeah. trying to make some room. So current stuff, you've got Roland Martin's going to be hanging out. The fly shop, anybody that needs fly rods or reels everything in the fly shop 15 percent off and we're doing cash back for people so every hundred they spend they're getting 10 bucks to come back and buy some more stuff um none of the new stuff's in from iCast yet but that's really why we're making all the room man we're trying to have a big sale so that we can fit in months from now when new stuff comes in all that uh all the new stuff that we're well, all excited about. We uh, we about nine more minutes here. Mm-hmm. I've James you've helped me out the day with filling in and the reason why we didn't do the show on Wednesday I our schedules just jockey around for charters. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, James, give your information. You want to do a charter? James is a full-time charter captain. Yeah. Fishes a lot. New guy. Good guy. Give your information. Yeah. it's um, So my website is, well, my business, it's Local Knowledge Fishing. Um, local Knowledge Fishing Adventures. I know there's like a Local Knowledge YouTube something, but I don't know what that is. <laughs> Mine's <laughs> Local Knowledge Fishing so- Adventures. And I've had the name for so long because I wanted to do it for years. Yeah. So about five years ago, I was like, that's going to be my name. I heard it. I loved it. I was yeah. going to roll with it. It's different. It's catchy. And then I fa- and then two years ago, somebody started the Local Knowledge Fishing YouTube page where they go to all these destinations. I get asked that all the time. Maybe you can piggyback off of I'll it. I'll have to talk to them. They're yeah, making they a lot, a lot more money than I am. Well, yeah. hey. That, if They're making were, a lot more money than me. It's a good way to, to piggyback off of it. But, but uh, that's the name. Um, the website's localknowledgefishing.com. Um my phone number is 813-625-2067. Yeah. Yeah, give James a call mm-hmm. if you guys like to do a charter. He's he's a, a great guy. Um what you see on the show is what you get. The dude's straight up. He mm-hmm. he's a down good fisherman down to earth, which is what you want um to me and a guy. There you. there's a lot of guides out there. Yeah. <laughs> I feel sorry for some people. I really do. Cause I, kn- I I know you know it's just like anything when you know the inside but they don't and and just the stuff that's out there sometimes. It's yeah. Great. There's a lot of good new guides too. A, a lot. lot. There are a lot of good new guides out there. Um, a lot of guys that, you know, I, I'm going to be proactive and and a lot of guys that maybe hadn't fished a long time, mm-hmm. but they've put four or five good years in and and made a name and and done good for themselves. Yeah. Which is good. Hey, man, competition's good as long as it's good competition. Yeah. I mean, heck, there's there's a lot of old guides that, I mean, they ain't good. <laughs> some yeah, some of the old guys are real good, and some of them ain't. So yeah. there's just good and bad in every. Business, I'm gonna nod my head. I've only been doing it two years, so I'm not gonna pretend I know what you're saying. But I I Dude, agree I'll, with you. I'll I know you've got the there. experience. They, they so can, they can do what they they can say what they want. <laughs> but uh, we yeah. got to shout out Ken one more time. So Ken, awesome meeting him at ICAST. Travis and I talked with him for a good 15 minutes. Um, he's actually got a company called Naughty Knots, a clothing thing he's doing. Okay, cool. Um, and from what I saw, the gist of one of the designs was kind of piggybacking that clean water movement. Yeah. Um, so anything that's doing something for that, big ups to you, Ken. We appreciate your support on the show. Appreciate what you're doing out there. Great meeting you. Love having you as a, uh, as a subscriber here. Yeah, and I want to take a f- the last five minutes here. Um, I'm, I'm not a big person. Uh, I, I, I don't. I don't know how to say this. The whole stuff that's happening down south, it's bad news. Um, I, I, you know, I've I've told other captains I don't. <laughs> if you're in Tampa, especially, and you go sharing a bunch of stuff about the the bloom and all the stuff happening mm-hmm. and the big sugar, and I, I don't know a ton of the details. I know it's not good, and yeah. and but you're not helping yourself, business wise. Yes. Because, but so I I would like to take this time to give my opinion i don't know how bad it is down a boca from what i see it's not good i've heard it's not good um but i will tell you tampa bay in my area and i would say gandy because i've been up there recently is not affected unaffected 
unaffected. And and I and I'm saying that because I feel like that we'll have people start doing videos or sharing this and sharing that. And while they, they're trying to do, and and I get their point, they're probably trying to say, hey, look, we, we want to get the word out to tell people that this isn't good and something needs to be done. Right. A, I'm not sure how many times if you share that video that it's going to get something done. I think you have to go through right channels. Uh, organizations got a group up, and a big group organization has to go. I'm just going to use uh, – CCA or something like that, mm -hmm. an organization with power has to go in there and, and, and voice their opinion in a professional way, have a spokesperson, however you want to say it. I think just sharing a bunch of stuff on Facebook doesn't get it done. I, I think you definitely get the word out. But I think it also hurts hurts the the, the surrounding areas. Right. Um, I understand. Yeah. And, and that that's my fear. So I will say that I, most of Tampa Bay that I've seen is not affected. We're not having red tie. We're not having issues. I know there's, think there's some down in Sarasota. But – I want to try to push that message that I don't know what's happening in Boca. I know that there is a big algae boom and it's bad, but, and I'm somebody just said Bradenton, Bradenton is fine right too. Because what it does is, you know, I think everybody means well, but brings a little sure skepticism to, to everything. Europe, uh, yeah, exactly. Good example mm -hmm. Hurricane hits Florida last year. <laughs> my business tanked Done. in September. I mean, I had to scrape to get my repeats to go. Yeah. I didn't even have my PVC fence knocked down at my house. It's no. good for 65 on our winds, and I live on the water. Now, that doesn't mean that the center of the state or the east coast didn't get pounded, yeah. but that perception that the media and the general public puts out there by the videos. I mean, social media, I had a captain tell me, it's so powerful. You're right, it is so powerful. It, is. it can hurt you in as a lot much of ways. As it can help you. Yeah, it yeah. can hurt you. So when you take videos, you start posting bad stuff, and you're maybe on a surrounding area. I think people just should try if you're gonna if you feel like you need to get the word out, be clear on what you're getting out. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, I think it's I, th I think it's hurting some yeah. you know, some businesses and stuff and, and you just have to be careful. It's it's tough. Especially a an 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 area down there that thrive you know, Boca's so much of their economy is it's to fishing. do with that with yeah. fishing and Crystal those River's and those way. particular months in Crystal River, yeah. So I, I totally understand it's it reaches beyond it may sound like you're coming from my business you're saying my business but i don't i know what you mean it's it's everybody's a, it's bigger yeah it's bigger than that yeah. it's tourism so in general. I, in, in, the, in the media people just well mm -hmm. i think the general consensus is people thrive on negative stuff yeah. <laughs> for whatever reason yeah. so it just it, it it does hurt and and i think just getting a clear message out will do everybody uh <laughs> has to be russia making the red tide it could, Chris, you know what it could be you never know it's believable Hey, anything <laughs> can happen these days. So, just guys, if you, I know you want to put awareness. Just make sure it's the right awareness. Yeah. And be clear on on who's affected, what's affected, and just be true to it because we know the media in general ain't going to be. They just yeah. they want ratings. I mean, look what they did at the. They're different. Field. Yeah. They're they different. repeated that little film, that little clip, uh, thousands of times on on internet mm -hmm. and, and, and TV. I mean, I had customers calling me and we're talking about something that's hundreds, a thousand miles away. Customers calling me from Canada, man, are you guys under, you got oil in your backyard? Mm -hmm. Like they were serious. Like it yeah. was concerned. And, and what it was, or the hurricane that's last year, all like, they yeah. got to see. Yeah. So, and I'm like, no man, come down, go fish and nothing is affected yeah. with us. That's the hurricane last year. You guys, you guys rebuilt. Yeah. yeah are you, are, are, well, are you under, are you like, is your house torn down? So th I guess my point being, uh, not that this is going to make a difference with our 40 to 50 watchers, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we have at a time. But, hey, maybe we can start something, a positive message. Yeah. You never know. So, yeah. But anyhow, guys, Tampa Bay is doing good um, for the most part. I haven't seen a lot of red tide. Actually, it's probably seen less red tide than I have in previous years so far. So Boca is bad. I think south of there is bad. Mm -hmm. Causes, I don't know. The green stuff they show in the video looks really bad. Um, I don't even know how all that's caused. I'm not going to sit here and act like I do, but it doesn't look good down there. But Tampa Bay, no, I can tell you Crystal River is crystal clear. I've seen Beautiful. Pin, pinfish out of my tower at 40 mile an hour and eight I foot of water. Up there, man. Dude, the water is insane. It is crazy. Like, it was neat until you see the boulder that you passed. Yeah. And that kind of scares you. This year, Puerto Rico and Louisiana. Next year, I'm doing Crystal River. Man, I need, I need the James Beers mm. life. But My first vacation in a long time. I hear you. Hey, <laughs> I take. I, I'm going on a cruise next month. You, yeah, three and days. Skiing. 
Yep, that's our guys' trip. And, and then, Crystal River. You know, this year, and, and we're going to end the show here, but this year I, uh, I'm i taking a couple more mini vacations. You should, and My man. kids are getting old. I work a lot. And I uh, actually got my cruise for free with all my points. So it worked out. So I got to take three days off. And I'm doing after-school starts, which is going to be slow. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably lose three trips. That's how it works out. But So, yeah, man, you, you got to get out and enjoy life a little bit. And I worked a lot of years, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of days on the water. And don't, don't – uh, don't take a lot of vacations, so, you know, even if I do end up in a boat yeah. every time. <laughs> enjoy it, man. I mean, like, yeah, you need to enjoy it. Well, guys, it's been a great show. Mm-hmm. James, thank you for filling yeah. in. Uh, I'm sure Travis appreciate it and Rick. And uh, actually, Rick couldn't come because of me. But uh, we'll be on. We're, we're going to shoot for Wednesday next week. I'm hoping we'll get on at 6. I won't have the issues. You can blame it on me. I'm not the most technical guy, but I, we, we, me and James worked hard. Yeah, <laughs> we did. So we'll see you guys next week. Awesome, guys. Thanks for